<laughs> Praise the Lord. But we're glad for everybody that's here tonight. Amen. Want to welcome everybody in and uh, say praise the Lord, praise the Lord to the ones that's come in. That's uh, Brother Kenny Riston and the Black Oak Church made it tonight. Uh, glad to see everybody out. Of course, we've got a lot of visitors. And before we get into the singing tonight, I would like for all the pastors, preachers, to stand to your feet. Let's see how many we got represented here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. All right, you can all have a seat. We're going to have Sister Madison come. Where's she at? Come and lead us in some songs tonight. I know I always say it, but I'm so thankful to be able to be here because there are a lot of people who can't and who aren't able. So I'm very thankful for that and for being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and for receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. We're going to sing page 80, We Shall See the King. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We're going to sing page 174, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Yeah. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then the little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and rolled my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he'll answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn. And you know a little fire is burning. You're going to find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may the light of day, the mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, and he'll answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn, and you know a little fire is 
Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day. A little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our pain and cry, and he'll answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn, and you know a little fire is burning, you're going to find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. And tell him all about our troubles He will hear our faintest cry And he'll answer by and by Now when you feel a little prayer will turn And you know a little fire is burning You're gonna find a little talk with Jesus Makes it Praise the Lord, church. Yes. Thinking about the, what uh, Brother Jared was uh, talking about this morning, as I stand in there listening to that song, uh -huh. we need to have a little talk with Jesus because the world we're living in is, is chaos. Amen. Uh, all you got to do is look around and look at the signs of the times, Brother Pete, and amen the Lord. I believe with all my heart it's not going to be long till the Lord's coming. Amen. I've never seen such a time as this, but I tell you what, it's wonderful tonight to see all the saints out in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Isn't this wonderful to be in the presence of an almighty God with the children of God? Amen. It's just a wonderful thing tonight. Amen. And we got so many here tonight, talents, and we got so many preachers, but we've got this young evangelist that's, uh, since this is evang uh, uh, you know, the evangelistic service, and he's going to be preaching tonight. He's always accusing me of calling him old. Yeah. Watch it, brother. <laughs> but we got this young evangelist sitting on the uh, platform tonight, and that's the reason I'm up here to lead the service. So just bear with me through this. Amen. And we'll get him introduced after a bit. Something told me not to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But we're glad for everybody. We got some, uh, uh, we're going to have some special singing tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank All right, you. we're going to have uh, Sister Betty, where are you at? Praise the Lord. Come. We want to have you come and sing tonight. Praise the Lord. If your heart is heavy with some grief or trouble,
the troubled waters of your soul. Yes, he will calm the troubled waters of your soul. He'll take your broken heart and make it whole. And when the storms of your said to, uh, and I'll obey the bishop today, to have the group come up and sing. Amen. They got to get a name, I'm telling you. <laughs> How about the Church of Jesus Christ? Huh? <laughs> Choir. <laughs> well, now you know. I like it. We're going to have problems, I see the <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, As they're getting Thank God. the group. Well, we got a treat for you. This Easter was the first time that we got to debut the Wildarski sisters. So they're going to sing the verses on this song tonight.
Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and seated on a throne. The seraphim above him, they covered their faces and one called to the Somebody passed me a note up here. They want Brother... I don't know. Somebody wants Brother Kenny to sing. Come on. Praise the Lord. I, pre I appreciate Brother Kenny. More. We've become good friends over the last year or two. Three, four. Glory, God's good, amen. I would think after all the years of singing, I could remember a whole song, but just can't do it. <laughs> oh. mm. I know that I'm not worthy to go. I've been a sinner And for that I am ashamed But I heard that you listen So I'm giving you my plea To unworthy Lord become me would you please come down to me? And I know that there are others who can offer more than I. And I promise you that I'd understand if for me you have no time. Yeah. 
of GC bottom and I'm looking up to see too unworthy Lord to come to you would you please come down to me I guess I must be From the seeds that I have sown And Lord you owe me nothing We haven't spoken for so long I think you'd spare some mercy I'd pledge my life Sister Zoe come and then we're going to get our young evangelist out here because it's going to take a little time for him tonight. Amen. Young, young as he is. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. And we're not looking over anybody but we're going to have uh, we're going to have several up here in the morning ministering so don't think I've looked over anybody brother Goodrich. Uh, amen. We're going to have some speakers in the morning and uh, but we want to kind of usher this along a little bit because there's a, a theme to this con convocation this week and uh, our bishop is uh, going to take us into the word of God and uh, hopefully enlighten uh, some of us to some scriptures. And I know some of you have heard a lot of these scriptures before, but it's very needful in the generation we're living in today. Amen. Sister Katie. I'm going to sing a song that my papa sang, my dad sings, and now I sing, so it's old. But I like it. And uh, I'm happy. I, I, I'm so thankful for God's blessings on me, and I'm so thankful to have the, be at this convocation. And Brother Larry, it's good to see I didn't get to say hi to you before, but I, it's good to see you. And I'm just glad to see everybody, and I'm thankful for his, what he's doing and the spirit that we're feeling. And... You know, it's come up quite a few times. Uh, JJ sang that song, which he started singing recently that uh, I love. And I'm just way too close to turn and go back now. And I started singing a song out of the songbook that's old that Sister Marilyn used to sing. And it says, I love him too much to fail him now. And I just, I just want to keep going. I want to stay in this and I want to keep going. And so that's what this song is about. Well, I started out to win this race, to serve the Lord and to look upon his face. Well, the way's been long, the way's been rough, but there's one thing for sure, I've got my mind made up, and I've got my foot on the rock. Drink from the bitter cup. Oh, when the devil comes and knocking, showing me an easier way. I stand right 
square on my feet, I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. Well, old Job was a man who was tempted in every way. The devil took his family, he lay sick both night and day. Well, his wife, she came a saying, Job cursed God, you've had enough. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. I've got my mind made up. And I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. Oh, when the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easier way. I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air. I look him straight in the eye. Well, the devil, he will tempt you. He'll fill your way with strife. Well, he'll make you sick in body, even try to take your life. But just put your trust in Jesus and say, Lord, I've had enough. The Lord will say, just move on, Satan. She's got her mind made up. And I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, drink from the bitter cup oh when the devil comes a knocking showing me an easier way i stand right square on my feet i throw my head in the air i look him straight in the eye I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up i stand right square on my feet i throw my Continue to stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's welcome our bishop. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Let's give him a hand of praise tonight. Amen. For how many years have been, Pastor? How many years have you been here? Since 19... Uh, 42? 42 years. Somewhere along that. Praise the Lord. Let's give him another hand. 41. I present our bishop and my pastor. Brother Stan. We'll talk to you later, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. We don't need no introductions like that. Amen. But I'll tell you what, I am glad to be in God's church. Amen. And I hope and pray that you are too. There's not a better place to be than in the God's house. All right. Come on. Amen. And I want to say, too, before we get started, I do appreciate it. I've told you probably several times, but I'm saying it from the heart. I appreciate all of you that came and you that traveled. You know, it's not easy these days. I understand that. And with the expense, the miles, and all of that, uh, you had to put forth an effort, amen, to do that. And uh, I want you to know we... Here in the Portage, Indiana, I appreciate that. And we that's why we'll try to do anything we can to make it comfortable for you. If you need anything, you just tell us. Amen. You pray for me tonight. I, again, I I've got some things on my mind. I, I don't know. Here lately, uh, sometimes we you think you've got a message or a thought that you want to try and get across and and you get up and I've seen that here lately seem like more than it was when I was younger. But uh, whatever God would have us to say tonight, amen, he knows each and every one of us. He knows our heart, as somebody had mentioned earlier, and I don't mean that lightly, like the world says, well, he knows my heart. Yeah, well, that's the problem. He does sometimes. <laughs> he knows your heart, and your heart's not right. But most people that say that are trying to make it that their heart is right. But Tonight, as we get into the scriptures, the Lord is always from the beginning. I love the Old Testament. 
I teach and preach from the Old Testament a lot, but I like the Old Testament. I, I, I said many times, I said a lot lately, the Bible teaches us that the Old Testament is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. And if you look that word up, schoolmaster, now here I have several meanings, but in the context that we're going to be talking about tonight, it's not, some people think the schoolmaster is just a teacher. Well, it can be, but the schoolmaster, uh, if you look at some of the older meetings, uh, I'm a schoolmaster of the house or whatever, is one that was put in charge and that made sure that everything went right, that everything went where it's supposed to go and be what it's supposed to be and all of that. And that's exactly what the, New, the Old Testament is. It's a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It's, it's making sure, God is making sure that you and I have everything we need right here. Right. right here. Sometimes people, they will override, amen, their family traditions and organizations. And I've said this before, uh, organization don't save us. Organizations don't save us. I'm not against if an organization, if, and all that is in the world today, I think, is just some churches, amen, that have come together. Now the, the organization, i just say this to get us started, uh, that's in the world today uh, are so far out of God's will, seem like it's pitiful. And I can understand why people don't like organizations. I really do. I've been criticized for saying that by some people, nobody here that I know of. But uh, an organization won't save you. Uh, a denomination is not going to save you. Amen. The only thing that can save us is Jesus Christ and his word. And uh, I, I believe that 100%. Back in the book of Genesis chapter 1, might as well start in the beginning. <laughs> Amen. We find that God... He had things in his mind before the world ever began, before he ever even created it. The Bible teaches us on several different scriptures about how Jesus Christ, even before the foundation of the world, he, God already knew what he was going to do. The problem that God has had from the beginning was getting these people that and we're going to look at this in a minute, Lord willing, getting the people, amen, that was supposed to have been created in his likeness, in his image after his likeness, to follow and obey the things that he wanted. All right. And we still have a problem today with a lot of people. They want to do things their way. All right. They are easily talked in to things that just like the woman was. They're talked into things or swayed by things that is just not true. It's not scripture. It's not Bible. Yeah. And, and let me say too, I, I'll be the first one to admit now, I, I'm like somebody else said, I don't know everything. Right. The Lord knows I don't know everything. Uh, but I thank God for what I do know. Amen. And I think that ministers, amen, I thank God for our ministers. Uh, but there's, there's a world full of ministers, so to speak. Yeah. But most of the world that's preaching, those, those ministers, they don't even know themselves the scriptures. They have been blinded, many of them have. They've been uh, indoctrinated with family tradition, organizational things, doctrine, and things like that. The Bible says, I think somebody mentioned it. I'm going to take my time if I may this, this evening. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us there in the book of Acts, most everybody knows it, that when the church came into existence and God had sent the Holy Ghost down, and there's so many types and shadows in all of this, we, we can never bring it all out, but... The Bible says, church, that when, when, that, when the Holy Ghost came down, it, it lit upon each of them like as a fire. 
Amen? And they all begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And when Peter had preached that message, though, and all this had happened, the Bible says something that means so much to me, and I'm sure to you, that it said there right after that, all that, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So you and I, church, today and tonight or whoever, we don't need to find my uncle's doctrine, family doctrine, or an organization my family's been in for years, my own ideas. According to the Bible, we, we need to find, well, what is the apostles' doctrine? And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, well, Peter just preached the apostles' uh, the apostles' doctrine. Amen? And you all know what that doctrine is. But where is it today? That right there alone tells us so many people have left the doctrine, amen, the apostles' doctrine. They've left it. They can say what they want. They can tell me all the dreams they've had, visions they've had, and visitations from the Lord. But right here is all we need. We don't need all that. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, breaking of bread and all that. So God had fixed, before we get into Genesis, God had fixed, if I can use that word, amen, what that woman had done, and not just a woman, but Adam should have listened to God Help me. <laughs> Seems like every time I get up anymore, I get into that. But it's there. Adam should have told his wife, no. He should have said, God said, not to eat that. He should have told her plainly. There's a lot of men today, and hopefully nobody here, and I don't direct this to anybody because I don't know anything like that about any of you, but I have known, and I do know a lot of ministers, pastors today, that the reason they're in the shape they're in and why they're in the condition they're in spiritually with God is because they listen to their wives instead of listening to God. And that's not a reflection on you ladies or sisters. Don't, don't get mad at me and throw any shoes up here or anything. Amen. But how many agrees so far? I know it for a fact. I've seen and Probably you have too. But the men, the atoms that we have today, if I can use that term, should have told her no. But he listened to her. And God had done told him, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. The devil comes along and just changed or added one word and said, you shall not surely die. Well, I ask you, did they die? Yes, spiritually they died. As soon as they took that, the Bible says, their eyes were opened. I think I brought out before, if you go back there into Genesis, amen, after the devil done, done his talking and this and that, and the woman looked at that tree, and, you know, she, they'd, no doubt in my mind they'd seen that tree many times before. I'm not sure what the space of time was there, but, you know, that tree didn't do too much to them. But when the devil, the old serpent, was talking to her, all of a sudden that tree looked so good. Yeah. It looked like it would make one wise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have you ever noticed sometimes you can be doing real good, everything's going along, and, but when that devil starts working, he makes things look different, yeah. more enticing. That's why we got to watch sometimes. That's why I just taught this past week, if you didn't get to hear it, uh, is the devil talking to you? We won't get into that tonight, but when that devil starts talking to you, believe me, 
You, you better watch because th- you're, you're going to think different. She looked at that tree and, and seen it was wise. It was good to eat and all this. And she wanted to take it. She gave it to her husband. But the Bible says she took uh, uh, and ate that. Well, you know, the Bible said that the day you eat it, you should surely die. Well, nothing happened. She ate it. They're still standing there. Everything's okay. I just, I don't know why, but I felt like bringing this to start with because we'll be talking about seed here in a little bit. It wasn't until she took that and gave it to her husband, which is supposed to be, and again, ladies, it's not anything, I'm not preaching against ladies and I'm not elevating the men or anything like that. I'm just trying to bring what the Bible says. She gave it to her husband, which is supposed to be the head of the house, which she wears his name. Excuse me. And when he took it and ate it, then their eyes were open. You ever think about that? Nothing happened when she ate it, but when she gave it to him and he, he ate it, Everything changed. Well, I want to go back now to Genesis chapter 1. You bear with me tonight. Not all messages do you run around the church. Not all messages do you jump up and down or everybody gets excited. Some messages are just to teach and get people thinking. I wish we could get people thinking more about scriptures instead of just reading them or having the Bible. It's one of the most, it was, I guess it still is, uh, outsells most books. Bestseller, I've heard. Well, it might be the bestseller, but it's the fewest read. They got them, but they don't read them. What good is it? I remember remember me teaching on... uh, Thank God I found the book. I've taught around a couple times over the years. Amen. I'm glad I found the book. A lot of people need to get back to where they can find the book. That book had been hid or lost. We can use those words. The best I've tried to figure one time a couple years ago with the scriptures. It was roughly 75 years that that book had been lost, so to speak. <clears throat> it hadn't, they hadn't been reading it. They hadn't been following it. The commandments and the laws that was in there were not being followed. The temples laid in ruins. They went in, the little king went in there and had them to clean this up. And while they were cleaning it up, they found that book. And they read it, took it to him, And he read it, and as he began to read, he realized we're in trouble. Because he realized that the things that was written in the book had not been, it wasn't being done. At some particular times back there, the Bible teaches us that Israel, a man was doing whatever was right in their own eyes. Well, let's look at 2023. A lot of people today are just doing what is right in their own eyes. Well, that book was lost for 75 years approximately, best I can figure. This one's not lost. It's here. Most all of you have one. What is the excuse today? Somebody please tell me what the excuse is today. That people don't know what is written in God's word. And you can make a lot of excuses and come up with a lot of things. But I'll tell you the main thing that I I believe, church, I feel, it's the ministry that's in this world today. They will not preach, they will not stand, amen, on God's holy word. They want to preach their ideas and their feelings and their dreams and their their organizational doctrine and this and that instead of just praying and seeking God and fasting. My God and, and looking into this and fearing God 
that we have to do this God's way. I had a, some scriptures in there. Lord, it, it would take all night. Uh, how many scriptures? Uh, and I think I touched on it where it says, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. All through 80, 80 scriptures I got printed out. I think it's five pages. King James Version. It is written, it is written. But nobody's paying attention to what is written, it seems like. Now, I know some is, but I'm saying the majority. They're, they're just not teaching and preaching what is written. They're preaching their feelings, their ideas, and their thoughts, and their dreams, and their, their family tradition. And that's why America's in the shape it's in. I don't have all the statistics like my son had this morning. Amen. I don't know how many places of worship there is in just America, but there's many. many. How many of you would agree that there's many? I don't call them churches. I really don't. I get criticized sometimes for that. I'm not the judge. God is. But as I often say, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right. Amen. Uh, I use that little pear tree out there. Has anybody looked at it lately? Is there any pears on it? There's no pears on it. Well, oh, there is. Okay. All right. Bishop Lee planted that thing a long time ago. Well, it doesn't take a genius when you look out that window and see them pears hanging on that tree. Well, what kind of tree is that? Well, well, that's a pear tree. Can't you see them pears on it? You know a tree by the fruit that it bears. I believe, church, we can, we can know a preacher or a minister or pastor right. by the fruit that they're bearing. Right. What they're teaching, what's coming out of them, what they're, what they're believing. That'll tell you what kind of a minister or pastor that they are. Amen. Genesis, well, let me, let me get back into this. Genesis chapter 1. Lord, help me tonight. God, as I said earlier, was had all of this in his mind. He had a plan. And here we find in Genesis 1 that God is beginning, Brother John, he's beginning to carry out that plan. He knew, amen, what he wanted. He already ordained it, so to speak, as the Bible puts it. It was ordained before the world began. And let's jump in here, maybe around... Five. I'll do some reading tonight. I hope you don't get tired. Or, but I'll try to get through as best I can, as fast as I can. God called the light day. Or God saw the light. Verse 4. And that it was good. I want us to keep that in mind. It was good. God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. I remember an old preacher, won't get into it, preached on that one time. Man, it was amazing. Uh, but anyway, verse 8, he said, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. See, God named these things. Can we all say amen? amen. God. He created it. He's ordained it. He's speaking it into existence. Amen. Amen. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into, unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw it was good. I believe, church, everything God made was good, don't you? Yeah. And if God made it good, and then later at the end of it, he said it was very good, if you if you read these scriptures, he said it was, he didn't just say it was good that time, he said, and it was very good. So if everything was very good, 
and it would have been left alone, it would have continued to be very good. But it wasn't left alone. Man got involved. Man, a man, began to listen to voices that he shouldn't have been listening to. And got everything all messed up. But before that, let's read these scriptures. And I know this is going to be different tonight, probably. It's not one of those, as I said, messages where you got everybody swinging on the fans. Sometimes we don't need to swing on the fans. Sometimes you just need to let the, let the fan do their job and you do yours. <laughs> Can we say amen? amen? And that's listen. Praise the Lord. Oh, help me. It was good. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Now here's where we want to get into this. God said, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding seed after his kind. That's what I want to kind of zero in on as we get started. Notice how God said after his kind. So in other words, if you ever open up an apple, you can see seeds in that apple. You can take one apple, open it up, take those seeds. I don't know how many is in them. Probably different ones, different amounts. But And you can plant those seeds under the right condition and you'll get more apple trees. Amen? After his seed. Another thing I want us to notice here as we look into this, he's calling this apple and this, these other things his seed. The apple's seed may not mean a lot to you now, but maybe it will a little later. Amen. Yielding fruit after his seed, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. The seed is in itself. It's in the apple. And whatever other tree or fruit, that seed is in that fruit. And I think it's important for us to notice that because He's going to be making man here in a little bit. After all these other things. And the earth brought forth grape, uh, grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. I think a lot of people read the scripture but they never stop and what do we get out of that? They're just reading it. And God saw it was good. What's good? That the seed is in itself. Amen? And the evening and the morning was the third day. Oh my. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now here's something, amen, we can look out today and what God did there and spoke there is still working in existence today. Amen. The grass is still growing. The trees are still bearing fruit. Some people get upset sometimes because they have to mow the grass. I wish they didn't have any grass or uh, this or that. Well, you know, it's a proven fact that if there was no grass, see, God knew what he was doing when he created this world and the way he created it. If there was no grass and weeds and trees, this, this world would be a mess. It would be eroded. It, you couldn't hardly do nothing. But that grass holds everything together. Amen? And the grass has its own seed. Trees have its seed. Just keep this stuff in mind. I know it might be boring to you right now, but hopefully you'll see what God was, was setting in, in motion here. Amen. Later, let's drop down to 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, and God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature and uh, that hath life, and fowl that 
may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Keep that in mind. After their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Keep that in mind. And fill the waters in the seas. And let, the, let, the, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Let's stop for just a minute. See, if everything at the beginning was doing what it's supposed to do, that's why the sea, he created some, but they, they multiplied. He told them to multiply. Well, when a, when a fowl multiplies, they get more fowl. When fish multiply, they get more fish. Sure, if we're just going, when God made Adam and his wife, amen, and we'll get to that in a little bit, he wanted them to multiply, and he told them that. Amen, and he had fixed it, amen, so that there wasn't two like it was before. If you remember when the flood, before the flood came, uh, Noah was instructed to get two of each animal, but um, when it come to the uh, clean animals, he said, I want the seven, I believe it was. Well, why is that? Well, because when this is all over, he's going to need the clean ones for the sacrifices. Can you say amen? So when God knew, because he's got all this ordained, amen, man, he's got it fixed to where man Amen. We'll get to that here in just a minute. He fixed it to where man wasn't. He didn't create a man and a woman. He created a man. Does your Bible teach that? And, and when God created them, he created them male and female. But we've only got one here. Because to carry out all that he's got ordained, it had to be done this way. Amen, church. And we'll read this to you here in just a little bit. In fact, I'll go there now and read you a couple of things. Now, you listen to some of these things. In Genesis 5, verse 2, Male and female created he them and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. Why? Because when he created them, amen, he only created a man. But in that man, amen, was uh, what he was going to do later with the woman. That's why he calls the great sleep. I won't have time to read all these scriptures tonight. I want you to, if I can just get, get you thinking tonight, if I can just get you to go home and, and look into this, and make up, you, you'll see. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you'll see this. Amen? In fact, there's another scripture here. I, it come to my mind. I believe that was in 5 I read there. 4 and 5? Or 5, I should say. This is the book of generations of Adam. In the day that God created him, in the likeness of God, now listen, made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Does your Bible say that? In the day that they were created. Why did God do that this way unlike the others? Because God wanted that seed that's in him. See, the Bible says he called when he couldn't find a helpmate like he did with all the others. God caused a deep sleep to come upon him. While Adam was asleep, God took a rib out of him and built a woman, he said, and brought her to the man. Amen. There was one. But he made them both male and female. They're there, but you only see Adam. And there's something else that God did, church. The Bible says he formed him from the dust of the earth, but yet he was just lifeless. But then God, the Bible said, God came down and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Amen. And he became a living soul. That's what the Bible says. So when God, 
was able to put, to put him to sleep, took out the rib, made a woman. See, she came out of the man that had the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Not two separate individuals. God fixed it that way. Why? Because he wants that seed that went right on down to the promised seed, which was Christ in the New Testament. Can you say amen? amen? But man messed that up a little bit. And look what God had to do to correct it. You and I this evening, if we would just get back to, I wish I could cover a lot more, but I, I, there's no, I, I got too many things I want to try and bring if I can tonight. Amen. If we would just get back to learning to obey God, just do things the way God set it up. It doesn't matter if it goes against everything in you. If God said it, just do it. If that's the way God wants it done, let's just do it that way. Well, but mama and daddy, uncle, I don't care what they said. What did God say? The devil lied to her. She listened. And look what it done. If that's what happened way back in the beginning, it caused all of this. What in the world do you think is going to happen today when people don't listen to what God said? And that gets us into, and I'm skipping a lot here to, to, for sake of time, and I want to get to this other part. People today, amen, are acting like they can just do what they want when it comes to salvation, living right, what's right, what's wrong. No, for right there, it, it's all laid out in the Bible. If we'll just read it and follow it to the letter. Amen. And it leads us, I've never brought this out the way I'm going to try to bring it to tonight, but with the Lord's help, we'll get, we'll get something out of this tonight to get people back to thinking, man, I've got to, I've got to, what am I doing? How am I doing this? Is this God's way or is it my way? Remember Israel was doing whatever's right with it in their own eyes? Look at the shape Israel got in. Look at the shape America's in. Everything is, is okay, it seems like, anymore. I've wondered, I've heard others say, what in the world, uh, what is sin anymore? Because in people's eyes, you can do about anything. Oh, that's all right. It's a, you know. What is sin anymore? I think I preached one time a few years back how did I title it? Can you find sin anymore? Because most people in the world, everything's okay. The church is not. God's got a plan. And we've got to get in that plan. And God's got him a church. And everything from the beginning with his name, even to the tabernacle, even to the temple, amen, right on into the church is all tied together. You can't unravel that. You can't forget some of it. You've got to follow it if you want to see it and understand it. Amen. I hope I'm making sense. If not, maybe here in a few minutes, you'll catch what I'm saying. Amen. God wants things done this way. He's not going to accept anything else. I preached a couple of times how that a lot of people think just because they offer God something that he accepts it. God does not accept every offering that man gives him. And it started back in the Old Testament. And that's why, amen, when, when Jesus Christ came on the scene and, and, uh, and, and began to preach and teach, if you follow it, get your... King James Version of the Bible out and, and start following what he was teaching. And you'll find that all those, I touched on this uh, yesterday, I think, you'll find that all the things, the scriptures that he used were Old Testament. Why? Because there was no New Testament. So we can take that Old Testament and now that we have 
the Holy Ghost, we have our understanding open, and we can see what he was doing. People say that the Old Testament has been done away. You ever heard anybody say that? That's not true. Old Testament's not done away with. New Testament, what we're doing in the New Testament is we're fulfilling the Old Testament prophets. They, God showed it to them. They prophesied it. Amen. And, and that's why the Bible says that those men, great men of God, they didn't have everything we have, but they was able, like Abraham, to look ahead. And they could see it. And they embraced it by faith, the Bible says. Thank God, church. That's why it was able to come. God protected that seed. I wish we had more time, amen, to look. And maybe one day we will about this seed, amen, that he, he was talking about back there. Why he had the seed the way he did and why he made the man as one. In fact, let me read something to you. It says you're in Malachi 2.15, he says, And did not God, I'm sorry, did not he make one, one, Adam, made them both male and female, called their name Adam, called their name Adam. But you hear people all the time talking, I, I brought this out before, I know, I'm talking about Adam and Eve in the garden. There were really, if you scripturally, there was no such thing as Adam and Eve in the garden. It was Adam, the woman. <laughs> she was a woman. She was taken out of man. Amen. It wasn't until they sinned, got their eyes open, God put them out of the garden, placed a flaming sword there, they couldn't get back in, that Adam named her Eve. Amen. So there was no such thing as Adam and Eve in the garden, really, biblically. Why? Well, because while he was in the garden, a man before they sinned, she was called Adam. Their name was called Adam. He was made male and female, but there was only one to start with. But when what did God do? When he caused the deep sleep, took out the rib, made them brought her in. Then after that, what did he do? Then the Bible says he went went over there eastward in Eden and he built a garden the garden of Eden and he took that man to start with and placed him in the garden told him to dress it and keep it that's what man is supposed to be doing today with the church if you follow that all the way through right. we're supposed to be see God took us out of the world he built the church put us in the church and we're supposed to be dressing it and keeping it Amen. Amen. But look what you've got. And in that, just start, he started long ago, 2,000 years ago. There was one place over there that bore his name. Amen. And that started way back in the Old Testament, which hasn't been done away with, which is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Amen. How many agrees? Amen. Let me read you something that Job said concerning this spirit in one before they separated. Job said in 27 3, All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. He knew what God had done, he understood what was going on. We find in the Bible where God one time, in his, you know, the uh, a lot was going on there and man they was trying to get right well, he breathed on them and said receive ye the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is the breath or the spirit of God that's in us you don't get the Holy Ghost by hitting somebody under the chin shaking them up and down knocking them in the floor that don't do it the Holy Ghost comes straight from God it came down on the day of Pentecost like as a fire. And the fire part goes way back, church. God led them even through the wilderness. Uh, even when they had the, the sacrifices, fire would come down and consume the sacrifices. I started to say that a while ago. Everything people offer, amen, is not always accepted by God. There's a lot of things out there today that is simply not acceptable to God. And he's not going to accept it. 
And we can see this in the Bible when it teaches us, amen, that unless that fire came down and, ex and, 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 and consumed that, amen, it was not accepted. Right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God told him in Isaiah chapter 1, amen, he said he was sick and tired of all their sacrifices, their new moons and their feasts and, and all. He, said, he wasn't after all that. He wanted them. God wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your mind. Amen. And if you'll give it to him, he can do wonders with you. With us, I should say. There's so many things going on in my mind right now, I can't even, <laughs> I can't decide which one to go to next. Sometimes that happens. It's embarrassing. But it happens. Of course, all you other preachers that are perfect, no, you, it don't happen to you, but it does me. Sometimes there's so much going on, I'm, 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 I, I kind of think, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't finish this one. We talked about that the other day, didn't we? What's going on in your mind right now? What are you thinking right now? What do you think about what I've already said? Believe me, Satan is in here. And he's talking. If we had the time, we'd go back and show you. I don't think this hard server goes on. Satan ain't there. We find where the sons of God got together talking. All of a sudden, there's the devil. Seeking whom he may devour. When he was asked, well, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> he said, well, this Job served you for naught. Take that hedge away from him. I'll have him curse you to your face. Face. The devil wants to get you away from God. He wants to separate you. He wants to separate us as people, as ministers. Because Brother Pete's going to believe this, and Brother Harold might be going to believe this, and Brother Jim, I love you. It's hard telling what he might believe. I'm just teasing. But that's what we deal with today, church. We've got to get back. My mind, you know, get there in a little bit. We've got to get back to that book right there. We've got to get back to reading that, believing that, and then doing that. I've got a track back there if you ever want to read it, and I cover it a little bit on that as far as just Jesus' name. We might get into that before I close here in uh, two or three hours. Don't get scared now. But Paul said, the things that you've seen of me and learned and did and all this, heard, he said, do. That's what he said. He said, do. One said, follow me as I follow Christ. See, this wasn't happening all through here. A lot of people weren't following the Lord. They got carried off. Why? Because they got to fellowshipping. Amen. And, and mingling with the Gentiles and the world and going on, uh, listening to their teachings and doctrines and and then here's a piece where everybody gets mad at me. Some, not everybody, but a lot of people. <laughs> they, they begin to let their children marry outside of Israel, or what we would say the church today. And God did not like that. Can I read you something from Ezra? This is an unusual message I've preached. I don't know when. But Lord help me. Unusual. I've got 15 subjects on my mind. <laughs> Ezra chapter 9. Let me read something to you. Ezra chapter 9 verse 1 through 9. Now when these things were done, I didn't take the time to read all that happened before in, in chapter 8, but... Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, 
The people of Israel and the priest and the Levites, the ministry, if you would, for us today, have not separated themselves from the people of the land. How many's getting the picture already? Now remember, the, the Old Testament are not done away with. We're fulfilling it, trying to. According, it says, doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, Persites, Jebusites, Ammonites, the Moabites, Bishop Lee, my pastor used to call them the Ite family. <laughs> The Egyptians and the Amorites, listen now, for they have taken of their daughters. See, you might say, brother, you've missed a lot. Yeah, I know I have, but keep in mind where it started, what God had in his mind, but I look where man is. Man is separating, and you'll see this in a minute, he's separating the seed that God planted way back there. He calls, he calls it to be divided. And that's why the world is divided. Amen. They have taken of their daughters for themselves. And it started out with, this is the priest and the Levites. Amen. Lord, help us. They have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons. So that the, what? Holy seed have been have mingled themselves with the people of the lands, those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. I keep some notes in my Bible back here in the back. I, I don't always get into them, uh, but sometimes I have. I've done a study on marriage and how people, what marriage is doing. I've told people many times, there's a lot of things that can cause us problems and gets us out of church and all of this. But one, one of the big ones is marrying outside the church today. God's never approved of it and I don't believe he ever will. And he said, because he had this seed, I wish I'd have had time maybe, but he had this seed all set up. If it would have worked God's, God's way, Man, that seed would have been, it, it, not, there wouldn't have been any problems like there were that God had to intervene and do all these things. But look at the world today. That's why here, amen, in Portage, I've, I've told the church, don't even come to me wanting to get married if you're going to marry somebody that's out of the church. I'm not going to marry you. I don't care if you've been here all your life. I don't care if your family is prominent in the church. All right. I've told my own son and daughter, amen, before they got married. Now, if you're going to marry outside the church, I taught them that. Don't even come to me and ask daddy to marry you because I ain't going to do it. I'm not even going to give you a, what do they call that? When somebody gets married? The party, the dinner. Huh? Speak up, please. No, not that. I'm going to get to that. Would they get together and rent a place to have food? And... All right, anyhow. I was looking for a different word, but anyhow, that'll do. Don't expect one of them either. We're not going to be a part of that. You might say, that's cruel. That's terrible. What kind of man are you? Well, I just, the Bible condemns it, so I think we have to condemn it. But then to marry somebody out of the church, and this is the part we didn't get to back there, but see, Adam and his wife were of one. And God made sure it was one. And God made sure both of them had that same spirit that he breathed into their nostrils. He made them both male and female, right? And they become a living soul. And then he separated them because the spirit was there. So both of them had the same thing. That doesn't happen when you go outside the church and get married. It's hard to tell them what you're married into. If there's anybody here, I, I, 
I never thought at first, but it's the scriptures. All I can say is you, you need to repent. <laughs> Amen. We can't marry outside the church. That wasn't God's intention. Listen to what he says again. For that holy seed that was started with Adam and Eve, which were one to start with, and God separated them. So that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this, now listen, when I heard this, I rent my garment and my mantle, plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard. I sat down astoned, astoned, astoned. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. There's something else that we've lost. People today, church, don't tremble at the word of God anymore. It goes in one ear and out the other. It goes in if they like it, it's okay. If they don't like it, they'll find some reason to ignore it. But back then, people trembled at the word. That's why when they finally found the book in the temple that had been destroyed and nobody had been teached taught or preached from or anything. Man, they were in, they were, everything was messed up. If you read and remember, if you were one of them that when I taught on it, maybe some others have taught on it, amen, when that, that little king, amen, got up and started correcting things, amen, uh, and all of this and, <clears throat> and, and doing what was right, getting back into the scripture, God, amen, had him take that and he was sending letters, amen. One was to these say. Because they said, man, we're hurting, and so to speak. We, what are we going to do? We have not been doing this. But you know, and even him, he got down in sackcloth and ashes, so to speak. My God, fear come into them. Why? Because they found the book, and they found out they wasn't doing what was in the book. Right. You can try to tell somebody today that they're not doing what's in the book, instead of them trembling, they'll get mad at you or get offended. Or they'll walk away from you and not want to talk to you anymore. We've got to get out of that church. We've got to get back to where the, the Bible, the Word of God, which it is God, in written form. That we fear it. We respect it. We honor it. No matter who it goes against. That's God. Some of you might not believe me. You may not have ever thought about it. But I'm telling you, so many people, they do not tremble at the Word of God anymore. They don't fear it like they used to. They don't honor, respect it. Oh, well, and they'll try to find something to disprove it. Or they'll, well, I'll just go to this other church. I'll go All to them years. Amen. That was going on. Oh, God wasn't pleased. God's not pleased today. And all those scriptures I told you about and notes that I have on marriage. My God, you're in the middle of marriage. I wasn't intending to do that. <laughs> But the Bible says back there in the Old Testament, which is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, train us, get us ready for it, and teach us. Amen. Not to do that. Several places. And there's one place, you know, when you get married, you bring them up and all this, and you say, who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Who has ever heard that? And supposedly here this, supposed to be a Christian full of the Holy Ghost, serving God. They'll get them and say, I do. God tells us in the Scripture not to do that. You don't approve of that. Oh, I know this ain't, I know this ain't making anybody feel good tonight. There's probably, probably some saying, hey, ain't nobody going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. There ain't going to be no blessings fall down in here tonight. <laughs> well, they may not be, but maybe they'll get to say, well, I'm doing wrong. Now, there's, I know there's things you do, but you can repent and admit I've done wrong. Amen? Lord, help me. When I heard these things, I rent my garment and my mantle, plucked off my, plucked off the hair of my head, and my beard, set down a stone. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of God, of the God of Israel. Ah, Lord.
uh, because of the transgressions, transgression of those had been carried away. And I set a stone until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness. So all of this happened to him because he found out that he had done wrong. And they were doing things that was wrong. Where is that preacher today? Somebody comes to me and said, Brother Randall, you know, you've been preaching this and teaching that, and they, and they show me in the scriptures where I was wrong. I'm God, God's hearing me. Amen. And I show me there I'm, uh, that I've done that wrong. I, I, I didn't understand that or something. I will say, my Lord, I'm going to repent. And I'm going to change that in what I'm teaching. But it's hard to find preacher today. Just say, well, uh, uh. no today. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I never heard that before. Well, I don't agree with that. There's no trembling. There's no repenting. There's no getting down and saying, "My God." See, that's how they looked at the Word of God back then. Look how they're looking at it today. Well, I don't, I don't think that matter. God understands. We've got to get back to fearing the Word of God. And I said the other, I think it was the first morning, <clears throat> people's always asking, why doesn't God bless anymore? Why doesn't God heal anymore? How come God's not moving in the services like He used to? And I, and I tell them, because we are not living like we used to live. And we're not praying like they used to pray. And we're not reading straight out of the Bible. I'm trying, but many people don't. And I'm not perfect. But that's why these things are not happening, church. We've got to get back to just doing it the Bible way. But if this, How many believe the schoolmaster is right? God said it was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. There's a lot more I wanted to get into as far as the seed and all, but I feel uh, led to just go on over here to something I, it's on my mind 24-7 anymore. <laughs> and I've made a lot of enemies, but I'm just reading the scriptures. Amen. It's like the, when you go to a restaurant and you order you a steak or whatever and it comes back and it's not the way you ordered it or something's wrong with it, it's not going to do you any good to holler at that waitress. She didn't cook that steak. The cook back there is the one who messed it up. You're hollering at the wrong person. People today are hollering at the pastors and preachers when they get up and preach the word of God and they get mad at them and leave or whatever. Don't get me wrong, church. I'm not trying to be mean tonight. I'm just trying to bring some things out for us to think about. Amen? Well, why are you mad at the preacher? He didn't write that. He didn't ordain that. Jesus Christ did. Why are you mad at me? Oh, Lord. Let's go to, I want to talk about why, why we call ourselves the Church of Jesus Christ. I think that's something a lot of people need to hear. Why? Well, we know you do it. It's all we hear out of you people sometimes. But well, why? Well, let me start off with why do I baptize in the name of Jesus Christ? Well, I can take the scripture and show them why. Why do you believe in receiving the Holy Ghost? Why do you believe in holiness standards? Why do you believe this? Well, we go to the scripture. Well, why do you believe? I told a man one time at the meal, I was young in the Lord and hadn't been in the church too long, but I'd already learned enough to, we was talking, and he asked me what, why I'd changed, why I'd quit this and quit that. And, and I told him I, I got in church doing that. He says, where do you go? I said, uh, what's the name of your church? He said, I said, the church of Jesus Christ. He said, oh, he's got one too? <laughs> now here's a man that don't know anything. Yeah. Didn't go to church as far as I know. But he'd already heard enough. There's, there's a lot of churches, in, what they call churches in the world. And I'm serious. I'll never forget that as long as I live. He said, oh, 
He's got one too. I, I looked at him. I said, yes, he does. He sure does. God's got him a church. Amen. Deuteronomy. Most of you probably know this. Nah, nah, nah. The Bible says here, and we're just going to read a lot of scriptures here, and we'll try and close here for too long. But I thought it, it's just on my mind. I, I got to get it off my mind. Why? So many people ask, why do you call yourself the Church of Jesus Christ? Why? Amen. Well, I'm going to try and answer that if I can. The Bible says here in, in the book of Deuteronomy, now you, you try and follow me if you, if you will, please. My Lord. The Bible says here, in fact, before I do read this, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. It was in Solomon's heart to build a house. Wasn't it? For the Lord. Uh, David, I'm sorry. But God wouldn't allow David to do it because of the wars and the lands and different things. But he was going to allow his son to do it, Solomon. We find here in chapter 8, and again, we, we couldn't teach this tonight. We'd be here till morning. And we went through all of it, but I'm going to try to bring the scriptures that are, I think, very plain. as what God was wanting way back and all through up until the church of the firstborn. I wish I would have had time. We would have tied that in with way back there with Adam, uh, but maybe another time. First Kings chapter 8. Then, Solomon, then spake Solomon the Lord. I'm sorry. The Lord said that he would dwell in, in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. See, they, they carry that tabernacle around, the first tab tabernacle, which was down in Shiloh, and they would carry it everywhere they went. They'd have to carry Well, they had that one. That was the first one. But then when they would travel, they'd set it down and put it up and all that. Well, it was in David's heart to give them a settled place of worship. I'm just glad we've got a settled place of worship today. It hadn't been for this leading us and guiding us through the scriptures, amen, we wouldn't have that. It's hard to know what we'd be doing if we left it up to man. Amen. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel, and the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and has with his hand fulfilled it. God was speaking, church, saying, Surely, I'm sorry, since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of, of Israel to build a house, that my name might be there, might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in David's heart, now listen, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, whereas it was in thy heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thy heart. Now remember back when God was having things done, he said, it's good, it's good. Well, it was good, you know, it, God was pleased that that was in his heart, but he wasn't going to let David do it. Amen. He's going to let Solomon do it. 19. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son shall come forth out of thy loins. He, he shall build the house unto my name. It started, wait, brother uh, Jim, get me there in Deuteronomy, uh, where he says this house called by my name. You're going you're gonna to do that? Read that for me. Uh, Read it, yeah. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and be attentive to all the strangers also to be there that all people of the earth may know thy name 
Well, that was a good one, but that's not the one I was looking for. All right. That's a good one too. But I'm still looking for that. I can't believe that's. But everybody tells me I'm getting old. That's probably it. Where he said, Are you going to steal, murder, and commit adultery? And come in this house that's called by my name and say we are delivered to do these things? That's the one I'm looking for. Amen. But anyhow, we go back to Kings. You can find that if you find it later. Go back to Kings. Jump over to verse 29. That thy eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there. That thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servants shall make toward this place. And if you remember when they, when they had that belt back there, it didn't matter where they were at in a foreign country or whatever. If they was going to pray, they'd have to turn themselves toward there and pray toward that house. God honored that house. They were to bring everything there. That's where, that's where it was going to be. And if you, if you trace this back and really can start in Genesis and go all the way through, you'll find it, it was in, there's no doubt in my mind, it was in God's mind. It was, it was his will that this house would be built and that it would be called by his name. Did you find that one? Yes. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. I'm sorry, I said Deuteronomy, didn't I? It's Jeremiah, yeah. Go ahead. Will you still murder and commit adultery? Will you still murder and commit adultery? Swear falsely. Swear falsely. And burn incense unto Baal. And walk oh. after other gods. Walk after other gods. Huh? And come. And come. And stand before me in this house. Stand before me in this house. Which is called by my name. Which is called by my name. And say we are delivered to do all. We're delivered to do these things. Think about this. Yeah. Is this house which is called by my name. My Lord. Yeah. Do I behold even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Yeah. But go ye now to my place. Where are you? Shiloh, Shiloh yes. At the first. And see, see what I did to it. Yep. For the wickedness of my people Israel. Oh, my, my. See, God recognized that house. He was happy about that. He used that. Think about it. You go back to Kings where I was at in 8 and then 9. I'm just jumping over to 9. I'm skipping a lot because of the time and the way this came out tonight. 1 Kings chapter 9 came to pass, verse 1, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he, had pleased, he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time. How many know Solomon was a wise man? One of the wisest men there was. God blessed that man, prospered that man. That man had wisdom. Amen. The Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared unto him at Gideon, Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. 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 Well, I don't feel I've done good on this tonight, but if we'd have got to finish all of that, God wanted what he was starting back there to be forever. But because of man and his ideas, he had to change things and, and, and work this out the other way. Well, notice what it says here. I've heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I've hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Everybody know what perpetually means? forever God wanted a place called by his name for his people amen but you can't get man to do that many times 
Look around the world. That's why we find all of a sudden, amen, in the New Testament, you got one temple there. Of course, we know it wasn't being run right at the, sometimes and all that, but it was still there. That was the city that he chose out of all the cities of the world, put his name there. That was the, the, the temple. But what was happening? All these little synagogues scattered all over the place. Amen. Where did you find the Lord? Where did you find the apostles? You'd find them every Sabbath day after you got in there over there at the, at the synagogue. Preaching, trying to get them people to see the truth. But many of them wouldn't. All the scriptures that they used were Old Testament scriptures. I've said it a hundred times. There was no New Testament. They preached from the Old Testament scriptures. They opened up the understanding of the people. Amen. And that's why they were in there trying to tell them people, you know, synagogue, where, where's that at? Who started that? Everybody was welcome there. If you study on it, they would get up different, they would let different ones get up and expound whatever they thought and believed. It's no wonder the people got so, so mixed up, so divided back then. And all the time, the place God had erected to put his name, sitting over there, and they're, they're selling everything, and got money changers in there. Nothing's being done right. Look today, church. I'm not trying to be mean, or, but uh, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Trying to live the Bible way, teach the Bible way, and they'll despise you. They turn on you. Amen. And people's crazy. They call us names. Tell lies on us. But it's happened for a long time. It's nothing new. Believe me. This has not come out in any way close to what I thought I would bring out tonight. But I hope I've got you thinking and, and maybe get you to understand, church, be happy where we're at. Be thankful. We even know what his name is. But when you get to thinking about it and you're wondering, why don't they, how come they do this and why they do that? Well, what else? they don't even know what his name is. They don't, church. Stop anybody on the street. Ask them, what's God's name? God? This, that? You, you'll find very few say, well, Jesus Christ is God. That's the only name you come down here in. No, they don't know all that. They've accepted the synagogue that they're sitting in, that preach against his name, the plan of salvation, the holiness. Amen. Oh, there's so many scriptures here. Could you bear with me just a little bit longer here? Let me read something else here to you. Lord, Lord. So plain. It's amazing to me. Amen. But people, people need to get their, their books out. See, ours is not lost. It's, it's right here. Amen. I lost my page there and my glasses are, I told you before, my eyes are getting funny sometimes. Amen. All right. Now listen to this. There's a couple we didn't get to. and I, I want to try and get to it if I can. The Bible tells us, church, that after he talked to Solomon the second time and told him all that, then the Bible, it opens up and tells us some other things. Uh, I think you go over to uh, Chronicles, and you'll find it there. My Lord, what God did and what God was able to get them to see. Uh, amen. Just through the Old Testament scriptures, which are there to bring us to Christ. Over and over, it was talking about his name. 
the temple that was built that was called by his name. That all the, he wanted all the people of the earth to know his name. Here we are in 2023 with all these people and all these places of worship scattered all over the country and they still have not figured out his name. Somebody, some of you would have to agree something's wrong. God's got him a church. And I don't know of a better name. I was planning one time, I'm going to close here in a little bit. I'll find one time, I probably still will one day, I'm going to have some of our young people, I'm going to have them get a big old, I don't know, card or one of their little frame on it. I want us to, if we can, get on the internet somewhere and find all the names of different places of worship. Oh, there's hundreds of them. And get them to write every one of them on that board. Every one of them. Just write them on there. But put Jesus Christ right there in the center. Or somewhere in there. And ask anybody. Even some of the young people. Now go up there and look at that. Don't tell them what I was going to. Which, which one of them... Which one of them do you think God would want his church to be called? Well, if they had any intelligence at all, they'd look at that and see Jesus Christ or the church of Jesus Christ. I, I would guarantee most of them would say, well, probably that one. But that's the last one you can find, seem like, anymore. There used to be a lot, but there are not as many anymore. Why? Well... Remember what I said? Unless he shortens the time, there'd be no flesh saved. Right. Every year, there's fewer and fewer people that want to hear the real truth. Yeah. They don't want to hear it about marriage. They don't want to hear it about dressing right. They don't want to hear it about baptism. They don't want to hear it about the church. Leave me alone. And that's why we're, where we're at today. But if we can get back to that, when Jesus Christ comes back, my God, we'll be leaving this world. Amen. Amen. I hope I'm my biggest critic. I know that. And I hope you got something out of this. Because it sure didn't come out the way I thought it was going to. But I still say God's got him a church. He built it. He purchased it with his own blood. One thing I didn't bring out, let me real fast, it's so early, nobody wants to leave anyhow. When Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, and they're crucifying him after all that's been said and done, the Bible, you know, they mocked him, made fun of him, they whipped him, they beat him, they spit upon him, they put a crown of thorns on his head, everything, and there he is. Just before he died, he looked down and said, Look, Father, forgive him. For they know not what they do. I'm persuaded to believe there's a lot of people walking around. They don't. They don't look insane. <laughs> they don't look. Whatever the other words would be. But they don't know what they're doing. And then bef when he was laying there, just at the last little bit, a Roman soldier come up and pierced him on the side. I've skipped a lot. I know. Out come the blood and the water. And we know that the church was purchased by the blood that was shed on that day. The precious blood of Christ. And it came out. Where did it come out? Where did the, where did the Roman soldier pierce him? In the side. Where did God take the woman out of? Out of the side. What did he do with what... What came out? He built a woman, brought her to the man, and their name was called Adam. <laughs> All right, let's just follow this right on through the bloodline, how God took care of it. There's a lot of preachers that could do a lot better job on this than me, but I, I'm doing what I can tonight. Well, that, when he hung on the cross and pierced him in the side, and the blood came out, he purchased. The church. 
The church is his wife. The wife has always wore her husband's name because look what the Bible. Amen. That used to be Katie Pogue, but now it's Katie Savarese. Why? Because she married Savarese. The Bible says when we get married, they become one flesh. Right back to the woman. There was one. Wherefore did he be a one? So he'd have a holy seed. Then he got on to them because they had mingled the holy seed. God had to correct that. Look how many people paid for that one. We got to keep the seed right. That was the church he purchased. And the church, I believe, should wear his name. I don't know what better. Can I be plain? Apostolic didn't come out of his church. I mean, I was sad. Pentecostal, Methodist, Catholic, none of that. His wife was purchased with that. And wives take on their husband's name. What's your wife? Your your wife wear your name? Oh yeah. Oh, you said that pretty boldly. <laughs> oh yeah. Now you gotta watch not get, you know. But now in Hollywood, they don't do that too much anymore. You can get married. In fact, they get married three or four times. If I was married as many some of them people would, I wouldn't. I'd have to stop and think, which one's my name? <laughs> seriously, seriously, church. God had this fixed right. If we would just accept it. Well, Brother Randall, if I do that, I'm going to hurt them. Well, you want to hurt them or you want to hurt God? And when you, know, when you can see that's in the Bible, the Bible says once you say you see, there remaineth no more covering for your sin. Is that right, Brother Jim? There may no more covering. It's there. It's written all through the Bible. That bloodline, it's amazing how he kept that bloodline right up till, and, and that's another thing. When Mary and Joseph, and he picked them, and she was a, she was a holy woman, good, good woman, amen? But even there, it wasn't Joseph. That thing that is conceived in you, a lot of this, I might have to get back into another message here tonight, is con that is in you is conceived of the Holy Ghost. Conceived. What's the Holy Ghost? Well, that's the Spirit of God. That's Jesus Christ. What was that back there? That was God trying to keep that seed, that woman and him as one, not two separate ones like everything else. I wish I'm going to repent tonight and ask God to forgive me if I've not done this right or said this right. But I hope and pray you, if you can just pick up a few of those things and, and study on it, look at it. Amen. It's there. I didn't bring it out maybe perfect. I didn't bring it out as good as I wanted to. But I can listen to YouTube sometimes and say, Lord, I shouldn't have put that on there. <laughs> Talk to somebody, well, what was wrong? Well, I just didn't, I don't, I think that ain't, I don't know, I didn't do very good. John Thank the Lord for John sometimes. He well, it does all right. You'll be all right. But I am my worst critic. Do you love the Lord tonight? I challenge you then. I challenge you, oh, every one of you. When you get home, huh? Say it again. Well, that too. But you're right. I would like for you to, to set some time aside, pray, fast, and read the scriptures. 
Read some of the ones I gave you. And read it differently than you normally read it. A lot of people read the Bible to disprove, disprove it. Nobody here, but I do know people that have done that. But read it and say, Now, Lord, open now my understanding that I might understand the Scriptures. That's what happened in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44. Read down. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. It's no wonder people can read and read and read, but they don't understand the Scriptures. And that brings up another lesson I've taught on, and probably some of you ministers have taught on. Way back there in the Old Testament again, Israel, in trouble with God, he blinded them, spiritually speaking. Amen. He put, put things on their eyes, they couldn't see it. And he said, that those scales are not going to be removed until they turn to the Lord. There's a lot of people who got scales on their eyes today. I didn't put them there. God put them there. You keep rejecting God. I've told people, I've, I've told so many people right here in Port, you keep rejecting God. One day, you'll reject Him for the last time. And God will say, that's it. So don't reject Him. You that need the Holy Ghost, there's no reason to take that long to get the Holy Ghost. I don't mean to embarrass you, but the Bible says if you repent and you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they received it on that day. You can get the Holy Ghost tonight. You can get the Holy Ghost right where you're sitting if you'll just praise God, open up to the Lord, be honest with God, truly, truly repent, Holy Ghost come into you. Amen. How many's happy? If I put anybody to sleep, uh, I'm sorry. Amen. I, I, I feel this, church. I, sometimes it, it's like a hurt. It really is. You see that people just can't see it. They, they just look at you like, where are you coming from? And if we could just get them to calm down and... I'm not preaching to your family. I'm not preaching to your aunt and uncle or your denomination. I'm just talking to you. Yeah. Read the scriptures. Amen. Lord bless you. There was, what time is it? 8.14. That's early. Can I read something else to you? Huh? All right, all right. For you that, well, if you get out of that new, get out of that Old Testament, I might listen to him. Well, okay, I'll do that. Let's go to the New Testament. First Corinthians, chapter one, I think it is. And I'm just reading you the scriptures. I didn't write them. I'm just reading them to you, quoting them to you. Here we are with the Corinthian church. If you look at the Corinthian church through history, the history will tell us uh, even that it was a pretty large church, influential, had different types of people and all that in it. But the people that, was, that made up the church there in Corinth were from different backgrounds, kind of like we are today in the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I want to read some scriptures here, starting in chapter 10, I'm sorry, verse 10. Listen what Paul, how many believes Paul? How many knows Paul was right? Paul followed the scriptures. Paul knew what he was talking about. Amen? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you all speak the same thing. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get more and more preachers to come together and let's all just preach the same thing. I think not only would it be a blessing or pleasing to God, it would be a, it would be a blessing to us because if we all teach and preach the same thing, 
then we can get along and worship together and praise God together and love one another, not be judging one another. Amen? Well, Paul taught this 2,000 years ago. That you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. Try that today. How many would agree with me? Try that today. You won't be in that meeting five minutes. Somebody's going to probably walk out. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you're crazy. That there be no divisions among you. That you all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you. But that you be perfectly joined together. In the same mind. And in the same judgment. The only way we'll do that is follow the Old Testament. Which is a schoolmaster. And bring us to Christ. And then we can get there. For it has been declared of me. He said. Of you my brethren. By them which are of the house of Chloe. That there are contentions among you. So I taught years ago uh, on the problems of the Corinthian church. And I covered both chapters. And we went through every problem that they had that was wrong that Paul tried to correct. I've said we were going to do that again, but I've never gotten around to do it. But it says, For it has been declared of you, my brethren, by them of the house of glory, that there are contentions among you. Now, the contentions that was in the Corinthian church, it goes on and tells us what caused that contention. We don't need contention in God's church today. It's not pleasing to God. It's not, it wasn't pleasing to Paul. Amen? God wants us preachers that believe in the name of Jesus Christ and holding the standard, plan of salvation. He wants us to come together. He wants us to believe together. He wants us to worship God together. He wants to pray for one another. Do good to one another. Some say, well, that's, that's impossible. Well, most of the time, I understand it is, but I believe there's some people, some brethren, amen, in the church that we can, if we'll, if we'll just try and get together and work together, and I might have to change a couple of things, you might have to change a couple of things, but hey, if I'm changing it to be right with God, so be it. I'm, I've changed things over the years. I've come to knowledge that some of the things I was doing, I shouldn't have been doing it like that. So I had to change it. I've even got up, it's been a while, I agree, but some of the older ones might remember. I've had to get up and tell the church, you know, I've, I've been wrong in this. I, I see that. Here's what the Lord is kind of telling us. we got to learn to change. Amen? Something that won't bend a little, what's it do? It breaks. Now, I'm not talking about compromise. We don't compromise with nobody. But we can come together. And what was causing the division? Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul. I, and another one group, I am of Paulus. Another, I am Cephas. Another, I am Christ. Paul said, is Christ divided? See, there was people there that heard Paul preach. And they, would, they believed what Paul preached. And Paul preached repentance, baptism, and all that. They believed it, accepted him to come into the church. Well, Cephas, some people heard Cephas. Well, he was preaching the same thing Paul was. And they heard it, accepted it, and they come into the church. And then you got uh, Apollos. He's preaching the same message. They accepted it. They come into the church. But when they got into the church or into the body, as we would say today, amen, well, this group, Jim's over there hollering, well, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm using you. <laughs> well, I'm of this. Well, Bishop Goodrich is over there. <laughs> So I'm a so-and-so. So they was wanting to put the one they heard the gospel from yeah. as their name or their leader. Yeah. And it was causing confusion in the church. Yeah. We don't want confusion. We want to all preach the same thing, teach the same thing. I'm not a Bishop Lee, spiritually speaking. 
I love Bishop Lee. He's my pastor. I, he preached the truth to me. He baptized me. I got the Holy Ghost. But I'm, I want to see, look at myself. I am, I am a, of God. I wouldn't baptize. Listen to what he says here. Now don't cast me off. Read it before you judge me. Is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? Why did he bring that up? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So what they were calling themselves after the names of them that heard the gospel, that's what they took on. Well, let's look at the world today real fast. I'm not going to keep you much longer, I promise. We look at the world today, and, and I'll just use some names. I normally don't call names of churches out or places of worship, but perfect tonight to make a point, I will. If you go into a Presbyterian church, and you hear a Presbyterian preacher preach a Presbyterian message, and you accept it, what do you do? You start saying, well, I'm Presbyterian. You go to a Catholic church, you're a Catholic priest, preach, and you accept that, and well, you become a Catholic. Isn't that kind of what's happening here? Well, let's bring it down to us. You go into a Pentecostal church, you hear a Pentecostal preacher preach a Pentecostal message, and you believe it, and you accept it, you become Pentecostal. Then apostolic, you go to an apostolic church, hear apostolic message by an apostolic preacher, and you hear it, what do you do? You become apostolic. And see, that's what's caused, that's what is causing division between the apostolic, the Pentecostal, the Trinitarian, all the bunch, the Church of Jesus Christ. It causes a division. See, they thought, well, we heard this and this, and we heard that, well, I'm apostolic, I'm this. We don't need that church. I wasn't baptized in the name of Apostolic or Pentecostal or Presbyterian. I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And the book of Galatians tells me when I was baptized in that name, I took on that name. So if I took on the name of Jesus Christ, why do I want to tag something else with it? I'm the church of Jesus Christ. I think I said the other night, you go to the store, and my, my pastor used to tell us this all the time. You can buy you some canned goods and get a can of green beans and a couple of cans of corn, and set them down, and everybody look at that and say, all right, go up and get the can of beans. Well, they'll go up there and they see the beans, they'll get the can of beans. But if they open that can up and it's corn in there, first thing they're going to do is somebody's deceived me. Somebody lied to me. <laughs> that thing said green bean and it's got corn in it. Well, when they come in, they see that name out there, they'll automatically tell them who we are, what we are, who we believe in. And it won't cause divisions. We can all teach and preach the same thing. And there will be no divisions among you. Don't put my name on it. I God, I, I'm nothing. I don't want my name on it. Where I grew up in West Virginia, there was a little, a little place of worship. Hey, man, this woman, I don't know what possessed her to do it. I never did go to it. Uh, she built a place of worship, put her name on it. Uh, even then, I was dumb as I could be as far as the Bible or Scripture. I said, well, that don't seem right. They put their name on it. But then as you go around the country, you can see Paul's name. Another thing my pastor used to say, if Paul, some of you middle-aged, I won't say old, some of you middle-aged ones can remember, he used to tell us if Paul was alive today and started driving around, first thing he'd do, I don't know exactly how he worded it, but I'll kind of paraphrase it, he would go buy him a can of paint and he'd be painting all of them names. He would. Because <laughs> Paul's like that. Paul tell you. But today, it don't mean anything to anybody. Names don't mean anything. I wanted to get into that this, this evening, but I just have to believe God's will was done for whatever reason. Amen.
I wanted to get into that. But maybe a latter time. Maybe a different time. Amen. Well, I guess I've bored you enough. Maybe I've let you down. Maybe I've, well, I thought, sure, he'd have something more livelier than that. Well, forgive me. Amen. I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm going to make you see see something in here. Amen. Yes, about God's church. You know, he goes on to say, if you read Corinthians, oh, he said in verse 14, I thank God I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. I'm going to tell you something. What you're baptized in is what you're called. You took on God's name. Amen. There's so many more now coming to my mind that Jump over here just real fast, I promise. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians. And I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as the babes of Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. Well, there's still people today, 2023, 20, is not able to bear a lot of the word. For ye, now listen, for ye are yet carnal, worldly. For as there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal, Paul said? And walk as men? Whew. Does that hurt us or what? For while one saith, I'm of Paul, and Another, I am Apollos. Are you not carnal? Well, if they were carnal by calling themselves by these different names rather than the one that they were baptized in, then I would say you and I are guilty if we do the same thing. Are you not carnal? Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed. Right? Even as the Lord gave to every man. Six, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God gave the increase. So I can pick up a little bit from you, Brother Jim, and I can pick up a little bit from you, and I can pick up some more from you other ministers. Amen? And then you might be able to pick up something and we come together. That's God's will. That's His purpose. Not for us to be scattered and divided. It's always been in my heart, can I, and, and we're going to close. Musicians, come on up. It's always been on my mind, my heart. I, would, I wish one day, and I've told Brother Jim this, and I know others have tried this probably a thousand times, and never got nowhere. But if we are God's people, and we do have the Holy Ghost, and we do love God, and we're looking for the truth, then I believe it could work. Well, what's that? Get a lot of ministers together, and let's just talk to one another, learn about one another, come to agreements, Amen. Ah, what a blessing that would be. But again, in closing, for the fifth time, but in closing, try that. Get together. For what? Why? What are we going, what are you going to talk about? What do you want? What you, what's your aim, you know? Said, like, okay, let's just get together and talk and have some fellowship. Let's, let's get together and reason with one another. Man, what a blessing that would be. What a blessing. Leave politics out of it. 
leave a denomination out of it. Amen. Us in the Bible. I would have to believe with all my heart that God would be in that meeting with us. I'd have to believe that. We love you and appreciate you.